Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'd like to add some of my comments here as well and perhaps uh, provide a little bit more for the government house leader to uh, consider as he goes and prepares his remarks. I'm going to keep my remarks very, very short, Mr. Speaker, because I think what most members of the House would like to do is debate C-14, a bill that could have been called on Monday, could be called Tuesday morning, and could have been called earlier today before the dilatory motions, as the government house leader even said during the question period, without, uh, in essence, they just pulled the fire alarm, Mr. Speaker. But simply put, Motion 6 is a disgrace and not worthy of a democracy such as ours. It is an affront to the dignity of this House and its members. Motion number six is a complete quashing of the opposition's ability to hold the government to account. It is the total disempowerment of certain members of parliament. Members of parliament who are sent here by 60.5% of Canadian voters. Motion number six is indirectly disenfranchising every one of those voters through the draconian measures set out. Beauchene's sixth edition, citation three, outlines some elements of the Constitution Act and our system of government, which I believe is relevant to, to this very point. It states, quote, Canada thus was ensured a responsible cabinet system with the assumption that there will always be a recognizable government with a legislative program. If the electorate so wishes, the system also presupposes an opposition ready, ready and willing to attack the government in an attempt to have its legislation altered or rejected. More tentative are such traditional features as respect for the rights of the minority, which precludes a government from using to excess the extensive powers that it has to limit debate or to proceed in what the public and the opposition might interpret as unorthodox ways. On May 2, 2000, during a discussion of the rule of time allocation at the Standing Committee on Procedure and House Affairs, the former clerk of the House of Commons, Robert Marlowe, responded to a question regarding the Speaker's authority to protect the minority in the manner described earlier. The former clerk said, quote, it exists intrinsically in the role of the Speakership all the time, where there could be the tyranny of either side, it could be the tyranny of the majority, or the tyranny of the, of the minority. My interpretation of what the clerk said is that there exists a limit to what a majority government can do. In an earlier point of order, I described how Speaker Fraser ruled on the government tactic of skipping over routine proceedings in order, to, in order to get to a point of time allocation can be moved. In one occasion in 1986, he disallowed it, whereas in other occasions he allowed it. If there was ever a point when a speaker should intervene to protect the mi minority from the tyranny of the majority, motion number six is it. Philip Laundrie, the author of... <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Parliament is fundamentally about debate. It is also about the right to dissent in a civilized manner. Genuine political opposition is a necessary attribute of democracy, tolerance, and trust in the ability of citizens to resolve differences by peaceful means. The existence and tolerance of an opposing view is essential to the functioning of government. Mr. Speaker, I have more to say on this, but I'd like to reserve the right to come back at a later time when the House isn't up against the clock against such an important bill as C-14. But I do ask you to consider, Mr. Speaker, that motion number six is a completely unprovoked response to a situation that simply did not exist. There are, I would invite the government to show me one example of a dilatory motion being moved by either opposition party when it came to the legislative agenda that the government is currently putting forward. They are unilaterally withdrawing every single tool that the opposition has to propose alternate, um, alternate subjects of debate. They are ignoring the good work of committees. They are preventing from Member, they're preventing members of parliament from debating such things as motions to instruct a committee, and they are completely changing the rules around the, the clock and the calendar. So, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to come back to the House at a later time, but cognizant of what little time left the House has to debate C-14 because of the tactics of the government, I will yield the floor at this time. Here, here.